Well, good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome on this uh, glorious Easter morning. Could I invite you all, please, to stand? Alleluia! Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! Well, we welcome you, whether you're here with us in the building or you're joining us online, it's good to have you with us on this Easter morning. Easter 2021 is, in church terms, uh, a bit of an advance over Easter 2020 in a way, because it is possible for most of us to be here in the building together. It's still quite different from usual, of course, we're all distanced and whatnot, but the truth we're here to celebrate is the same as ever, the unchanging truth that the Saviour who who died is not dead anymore. The Saviour who died on the first Good Friday is not dead anymore. Now, I guess uh, some of us are just waiting for Mark to uh, show us how to make the craft, which we were either given on Friday or have in front of us uh, today. But before we go any further, I have to give you a slightly boring official notice that uh, the church membership list, the electoral roll, is going to be revised uh, very soon. And if you consider yourself a member of the church here and you're not yet on our electoral roll, then uh, do please uh, ask us for a form and we'll make sure we get you properly uh, listed before our annual meetings coming up uh, in May. But now we're going to have our first Easter song. We have to keep our masks on uh, here in the building uh, and we can't actually sing out loud, but we can sing under our breath uh, and in our hearts. The song, See What a Morning. Oh, 
Thank you. Do please uh, sit down, everyone. Now, some people have been telling me that uh, there were people going round Terrington St. Clement on Friday morning looking for QR, QR codes on pictures of eggs stuck up all over the place. Well, some people have been saying that other people might not have seen might not have seen any of that. That seems a very strange thing to be doing, uh, don't they? I think we need some witnesses. Did anybody see other people going round Terrington St. Clement uh, looking at co codes on eggs on Friday morning? One, one, two, three, four, five, so oh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifty. Oh, there were quite a lot of people. We have eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses that people were going around Terrington St. Clement on Good Friday morning scanning QR codes of eggs. Yes, you saw it as well, Finley. Brilliant. Well done. That's great. So, if anybody doubted, they don't need to doubt anymore, do they? We've got loads of eyewitnesses who saw it. So we can believe that it really happened on Friday morning. Well, Mark, those who took part in that uh, uh, trail, of course, will know that there was a craft being given out at the end, and some people have got that at home. Others have got it on their tables here in church. So, uh, Mark, do come and uh, show us what we've got to do. Uh, can everyone hear me? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah? A little bit? I'll turn myself up, shall I? There we go. Testing one, two. Is that better? There we go. Well, welcome everyone, and uh, I'm going to go over to my craft table, and um, uh, here's Derek, by the way. Wave to Derek. There you go. Everyone wave. There you go. Hello, Derek. That's it. Hi, Derek. There's Derek. There you go. Um, Derek, Derek is my co-host uh, at um, Rock Cafe Online. We've done quite a few episodes uh, during lockdown, and Derek helps me do that. Now. Uh, I just want to say a big thanks to everyone who helped out with the family trail on Friday. So thank you. And thank you if you came along. Now, if you did come along, uh, then you will have been given a, a craft pack. Um, and uh, there we are. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, you're going to need some scissors. You're going to need a ruler. And you're going to need a pencil. Now, those of you who are in church, we've already pre-cut, so you've got a bit of a head start. Now, um, parents at home uh, and parents here, the cold lamination pouch is potentially tricky, okay? So apologies in advance for any tears, okay? Um, but hopefully, if you do it carefully, it should all go smooth, okay? Now, if you're at home, you have the advantage of pausing this and going through it again slowly. If you're here, then it could, be, uh, it could be fun. So, inside your pack, you will find some colored tissue paper. You will find a laminating pouch, and you will find a sheet of black paper. So we're going to start with a sheet of black paper first. The sun is very bright here. Um, Robert, could you do me a massive favor and just stand? Just stand here. That'd be wonderful. Just to block, give me a bit more shade. That'd be great. That's better. Thank you. That's great. So, first of all, we take your black sheet of paper and we're going to create a frame. So, take a ruler, take a pencil, mark the top. It doesn't have to be uh, exact. I'd say maybe about uh, two centimeters with, we're going to cut those off now, okay? So, so far, so easy, yeah? We've just drawn a couple of lines, and we're going to cut the top off, and we're going to cut the bottom off. There we go. So, put those to one side. That's the top and the bottom of your frame. Now we're going to draw another line about the same width, and another one about the same width. These are the sides of the frame, and then I'm going to draw another line 
probably about the same width next to that. We're going to cut those off. Robert, you're doing a fantastic job of being a sunshade. That's good. That's good. There's all sorts of things that can go wrong in this service. So um, please bear with us if things go a bit wrong. But anyway, there we go. There's your two sides. Put them to one side. Um, and uh, sorry, I d I've missed out one here. So I need, to do, I need to do an extra one, OK? So you need to cut four strips from your black piece of paper, OK? Now, those two are going to be used for crosses. So we're going to cut about a third way along, yeah? Two thirds, a third ratio, like that. Put that one to one side. We're going to do the same on this one. A third to two thirds. There's the other cross. And then we're going to make our final cross uh, from the rest of the black paper along the long edge. And we're going to cut that along. For those of you who are sitting here, the adults particularly, are you having a fun time just now? Yeah? yeah? I just check in. I just I didn't want it, I didn't want you to feel left out, okay? So there we go. There is our next black strip. Mine's kind of slightly torn a bit there, but you get the idea. And I'm gonna cut that two thirds, a third again, and that's gonna be our main cross. I have brought a bowl, you can do this freehand, but we put the bowl over the remainder of our black paper. We draw around it to create a hill. We're going to cut that out. There we go. You can get rid of that now. Now, we take our tissue paper. Everyone, oh, sorry, Derek. Sorry. Um, Derek helped me pack all the uh, craft packs the other day. He was very helpful. Now, you take your uh, clump of uh, tissue paper, and I'm going to cut it into some big chunks like that. You can make it any shape you like. And they are ready to go. OK, so we'll put those over there. This is where the fun begins, parents, OK? Take your laminating pouch. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can either, we see, peel it open a bit, OK? You'll see, don't remove the sticky bit yet, but you'll see on your laminating pouch that there's this kind of non-sticky side, and then you've got the sticky side, which has got the backing paper on it. You can either use the non-sticky side to lay out your picture, and then peel it, the backing paper off at the end and stick it on. That has some issues of its own. Or you can do it this way, where we peel off the backing paper. Now, just, just be mindful, parents, that this is pretty sticky, OK? So don't touch the backing paper. You need an extra pair of hands for this, basically. Don't touch the backing paper um, uh, without something that you don't want stuck there, if you see what I mean. So um, <laughs> that probably didn't make any sense. But I'm going to show you what we do now, right? OK, so you take your top bit, OK? And you stick it, leaving a bit of a, a bit of edge to the backing paper, OK? And you stick that on. Now, see how that is already stuck on that end, and it's not completely straight. You can take more time and care than I am. We do the bottom edge, OK? We do the sides. I, sh I should have actually done the sides first, but anyway, there you go. Look, they, they, they pretty much fit in there. Put your sides on. That's your frame. Then where's the hill? The hill's here. Stick the hill on. Where's the main cross? My main cross is over here. We'll stick that on with the bar across. Stick that there. The two other crosses, one there and one there. One there. It's kind of going a little bit out of focus there, that camera. There, there you are. Now, then you can go free for all and stick your tissue paper onto uh, the sticky stuff, like so. Adults, you're still with us, yeah? Give us a big cheer, yeah? 
Okay. Um, there we go. Sticking all that on. Adult, the adults are just dying to get home and see if they've got any cold laminating pouches at home where they can do this for themselves. There we are. Right. That's it. Now, once you've done that, you can put your other sheet on, seal the edges up, and here's the moment of truth. Focus. We have a window sun catcher. So uh, on Easter, first Easter morning, the crosses would have still been there. But it was different, wasn't it? There was light. There was hope of a new era, a new chapter in our relationship with God through what Jesus had done. So hopefully at home you can all enjoy that. Um, hopefully your laminating pouches haven't caused too many issues. Um, sorry if they did. Um, and uh, of course, if, if anyone's ever tuned in to Rock Cafe Online, you'll know that Derek, here we are, here he is, Derek loves having a go at the craft as well. So uh, Emma's going to put up a picture of that. So alt tab, please, Emma. There we go. And uh, let's see how Derek got on with this craft. There he is. Well done, Derek. OK, hopefully you didn't get in that much of a mess at home. So uh, well done, everyone. And thanks again for taking part in the family trail. And thanks for helping as well. Thank you, Derek. And thank you, uh, Mark, and, uh, for, for doing that for us at pace in front of everybody. I think that's very impressive, isn't it? Round of applause. Thank you, Mark, very much. And while we're on the subject of uh, thanks, thanks to Mark and to all the team who uh, put so much effort into Friday's event. And thanks as well to some folk here. Thank you to our musicians who have been playing for us every Sunday when the rest of us can't sing. They've been singing, playing for us and singing every Sunday. So thank you very much to all our musicians. Thanks to our techies, uh, keeping us all uh, technologically in line, making it all happen. Thanks to our stewards. Thanks to our flower arrangers who've given us some flowers to celebrate Easter today as well. If I haven't thanked you, I'm sorry, but thank you very much. And uh, also, I th is it, Dennis, is it your birthday today? Don't worry, we're not going to sing because we can't, but it's your birthday today, is that right? Happy birthday, Dennis. Happy birthday, Dennis. I'll give you a round of applause. Excellent. Right. Well, we've just seen a remarkable... Uh, demonstration. We've witnessed a remarkable demonstration. We've told those of us who saw everything happening on Friday morning, uh, we've told those who didn't what actually happened. We're going to have a think now about uh, who saw, who witnessed what happened on the first Easter morning. Now, we haven't had a Bible reading yet, so we can do this from memory. Who can, uh, who can remember? Who were the first people on site at the tomb where Jesus had been buried back on the end of Good Friday. Who were the first people? Anybody want to have a, a go at telling us who the first people there were? Everybody's feeling a bit shy. We have been singing about it. Or here we, Who was first? Mary, thank you very much, Zena. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And then in uh, Luke's Gospel, we read that there was a lady called Salome and uh, Joanna was there as well. And what was the first thing they saw when they got there on that first Easter morning? Anybody? What did they see first of all? It, well, exactly. They didn't see anything. They saw an angel, but the tomb, they didn't see anything, did they? They saw an empty tomb. They saw an angel and an empty tomb. They didn't see Jesus. Who was the first person to see Jesus alive again? Mary again, thank you, very good. Mary Magdalene again, and then the other Mary, and maybe Salome and Joanna as well. Who else saw Jesus on the first Easter morning? Who else saw Jesus on the first Easter morning? Anybody? 
Peter. Peter saw Jesus on the first Easter morning as well. Anybody else see, see the risen Lord Jesus during that first Easter day? Sorry? Yes, jo John did later. Anybody before John? Anybody else before John? Sort of in the middle of the day kind of thing. Clear pass. Clear pass on the road to uh, Emmaus. And he had someone else with him. Do we know the name of the someone else with him? Don't be hand up because we don't. We're not told. Clear pass and his mate. Could have been called Fred for all I know. But we, one of the people who saw the risen Jesus on the first day, we don't even know their name. Cleopas and his friend. But then in the evening of the first day, this happened. And Ken is going to come forward and uh, read to us from John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse uh, 19 and follow. It'll be on the screen. Ken is going to read to us what happened on the evening of the first Easter day. Thank you, Ken. Good morning, everyone. First reading is from John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 19 and going through to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Ken, very much indeed. We're going to have our next song now, which uh, our musicians are going to play and sing for us. We'll stand, even though we can't sing out loud, we'll stand here. What a wonderful saviour is Jesus. Well, um, something slightly different is going to happen now because I'm going to move out of sight of the camera. So apologies to uh, you at home. Got to move out, out of the sight of the camera. Now I just need to get uh, what I need for the next part of the service. Now, um,
Sorry to you. Sorry. Sorry. We'll come back. Don't worry. We will come back. Honest. Right now. Here. Right. Now, where are we? <clears throat> Indeed, a round of applause. Now, I can take that off. I just put it, I can take it off. Now, you at home didn't see what happened then, did you? You weren't eyewitnesses, were you? How might you find out what happened, do you think? Anyway, we're going to have to wait a minute or two because uh, now Anna is going to come and read how John goes on in his gospel to speak about someone who wasn't an eyewitness of the risen Jesus that first Easter day. So thank you, Anna, very much. Our second reading is John chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks uh, to Anna very much. Thank you to Ken. Thank you to Anna for reading for us today. So what was Thomas's problem? What was Thomas's problem? What did Jesus have to very gently sort of review, rebuke him for. He told him he had to stop doing something, didn't he? What did Jesus have to tell Thomas to stop doing? Sorry? Doubting. Indeed, he said, stop doubting and believe. Jesus said to Thomas, reach out, put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out, put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe, because Thomas was doubting the reports of the eyewitnesses. Unless I see for myself, said Thomas, I won't believe. Well, now, I wonder whether the people at home uh, will believe the eyewitnesses 
that we've got here about what they saw me do a little while ago. Have we got any eyewitnesses who are prepared to come and speak to the camera about what they saw me do? Anybody from the family zone want to come and speak to the camera up here about what they saw happen? Tell everybody at home. Anybody from the family zone? We have all gone a bit shy. You can bring mummy or daddy with you. Somebody want to come and tell us? Yeah? Here we go. You see, you're not going to be out of it much longer. We have an eyewitness who's coming to speak to us. Any other eyewitnesses want to come and say as well? Any other eyewitnesses want to come and say as well? Yeah, anybody else? Yeah, come on, William. Very good. Let's, 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 have, a few, let's have a few eyewitnesses because uh, Thomas heard lots of eyewitnesses, didn't he? So you're going to do it there, right? Right. So, don't worry, I'm not going to put anybody here. There we are. You want to sit down there, yeah, Lindsay? Yeah. And Mark will bring the camera and you can say what I did just now. Do you, do you remember what you saw? This egg. Yeah, there was an egg. And where did the egg end up? On Helen's head. <laughs> there was an egg. The egg ended up on Helen's head. Is that really what you saw, Finley? Yeah. That's what you saw? Good. Is, was that the same, Andrew? Is that what you saw? Yeah, we saw it splat on Helen's head. Wow, thank you very much. Can we have another eyewitness? Thank you very much. Like Let's hear what William's going to say. Very good. What so, happened? what did you see, William? Um, it was empty. <laughs> the shell. It was an egg. What happened to the egg? It was. The shell was empty. The shell was empty. Well, that's a very good eyewitness then. And I broke the egg on Helen's head, but the egg was empty, wasn't it? That's yeah. a very good eyewitness report. Excellent. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to say what they saw? Yeah, OK, we've got two eyewitnesses. That will keep us going, Matt. Thank you very much for the roving camera there. Indeed. Well, now, you, you there at home, do you believe Finlay and William? And quite a few others here. Put your hand up if you saw an egg being broken on Helen's head. But yeah, exactly. Hands all round the church. The vicar broke an egg on his wife's head. I broke two. I broke one in a bowl. That was a normal egg. Then I broke one which didn't have anything in it because I'd blown it on Helen's head. I do want to survive the rest of the day. So uh, <laughs> that one had been blown. Well, do you believe them? Do you believe them? Thank you to our eyewitnesses. They get back to their seats. Thank you to our eyewitnesses. Do you believe them? Well, I, I, I hope you believe them because they saw it and they're telling the truth. But of course, the big question of Easter is do you believe that Jesus really came back to life from the dead? Now, Thomas did get to see the risen Jesus alive again. And he stopped doubting, and he believed, didn't he? He said, my Lord and my God, when he saw Jesus alive again. And Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And that's us, isn't it? We probably won't see the, the risen Lord Jesus here on earth ourselves. But that doesn't mean we're asked to believe without any evidence. We're not asked to believe without the evidence. Hear now how John goes on immediately after he'd reported uh, what Jesus said to Thomas. So just after the reading Anna gave us. Verse 30, it's up on the screen. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. 
But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So John is telling us that he recorded the eyewitness accounts of the risen Jesus, and indeed of so much else that Jesus did, so that we have all the evidence we need to answer not just the big question of Easter, but the big question of life, whether Jesus really is the Messiah, whether he really is God's promised King, the Son of God. And he wants us to believe because it's by believing that we get life. As John wrote, that by believing you may have life in his name. It's by believing that we have life forever as friends of God. So you see, whether we believe these eyewitnesses is really important. Not just John and Thomas, but Peter and the rest of the twelve, as we were hearing, and Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, and Cleopas and Fred, whatever his name was, and also, Paul tells us in one of his letters, more than 500 others, most of whom were still alive when Paul wrote that letter a few years later. Now, I think there are very good reasons indeed to believe those eyewitnesses of the resurrection of Jesus, and I'm very happy to talk to anyone uh, about any of that any time. Because at some point, we have to make up our minds whether we believe Jesus rose from the dead and accept all that follows from that, living His way with His forgiveness, friends with Him forever, or whether we disbelieve it and accept all that follows from that. Because Easter demands a decision. The resurrection of Jesus demands a decision. Now, for those who've made the decision on the basis of the eyewitness evidence that Jesus really was alive, we have two ways to uh, express that. First of all, we're going to have our next song. This is, uh, for most of us, in our hearts. We can still express it to God in our hearts, uh, and then we're going to say something after that. But first of all, let's stand for our next song. How can it be the one who died? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. i 
Thank you. Do please sit down. How blessed are those who've believed and haven't seen but have believed on the basis of the evidence the Scriptures give us. Well, I said we could uh, express our faith in the words of the song. Now we're going to use the uh, Easter statement of faith based on those words uh, of Paul, which I was mentioning earlier in 1 Corinthians 15. So do please stand. You've just all sat down. I'm sorry, I told you that, didn't I? Do please stand again. There we are. And uh, we're going to join together in the words uh, of this statement of faith. Together we say, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures. He was buried... He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. Well, do please uh, feel free to sit again now, and we're going to uh, have just a few moments of prayer together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that in the Bible you've given us the eyewitness accounts of what happened during your life here on earth and especially of your resurrection. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are alive, that after you dealt with our sins on the cross, after you'd paid the price for us, you were raised to life and are alive forever. We thank you for this and pray that you'll help us to remember this, help us to remember this truth at the base of our faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our world. We pray for a world where many go in fear in the pandemic, where many live in fear because their countries are oppressive where many are in fear because they don't have enough food. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you might help us to do what we can at this time of pandemic, to bring hope and to care for each other, and especially to bring the hope of the resurrection, that our death in this life is not the final end, but that through believing in you, we can have life forever, life with you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Heavenly Father, for us all as we uh, go about our lives now. We pray that you will help us to be thoughtful, to be full of the joy of the resurrection, to be full of hope, so that in this world where many fear death, for whatever reason, you might help us to show as Christians that we have a hope which goes beyond the grave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we're going to finish our prayers now by joining together in the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen. Together we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we've said that the glory is Jesus's forever, and we're now going to have uh, the hymn which expresses that, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Shall we stand for our hymn? Stone. 
Well, do please uh, sit down, everybody, for our final prayer. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Lord Jesus, we pray that uh, we may indeed believe and we may show our belief in you as Lord and God by serving you as Lord and God today and every day. We pray that you, make a, you may assure us that through our belief we have life in your name. Help us to live out that life now, we pray, as we look forward to your return and to being with you forever. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning, for being with us. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with us for any reason, then uh, including whether you've decided that uh, Easter demands your decision. Well, for those uh, online, the uh, email address will be up on the screen uh, after the service. Do please be in touch with us if you're here. Give us a ring or again, use the email address and we'd love to talk to you. But for now, let me say happy Easter. Uh, we'll see you next week uh, at 10 o'clock, back to normal next week, uh, 10 o'clock service here and online. See you next week uh, and bye-bye for now. <laughs>